We have learned from the masters in poetry, art, music, and story. I just, I am so inspired by what I've been learning. And um, now one more presentation. Uh, I grew up in Southern California, and my mother, like I said, lived in Idaho Falls, and almost every summer we take the long drive up to Idaho Falls for family reunions, and I loved my Idaho Falls cousins. They lived in a little house, a tiny little house, with one bathroom and eight children on the Snake River, and this house was so full of love and fun and song and story. I loved my Idaho cousins. And guess what? Cecilia is one of my Idaho cousins, and that's why she's here. And guess what? She's still fun, and her house is still filled with fun and stories and love. And I'm so happy that she would come and bring some of her children. This isn't even all of them. One and a half. Um, so I am going to turn the time over to Cecilia and group to talk about joy and motherhood. Do you just love Marlene? I, had, I knew she was famous and doing great things. <laughs> but I am just amazed at what she has done and the impact that she has had upon um, the world. And how fun to see her good husband, Brent, their beautiful daughters. And my only living aunt on the Johnson side, my sweet Aunt Margaret. Aunt Margaret, wave your hand. That's so funny that Marlene started out with my humble beginnings on a potato farm in Idaho Falls. The one trip that I took with, with our whole family, all 10 of us in a Volkswagen bus, was to California to go visit our cousins there. And I will never forget the thrill of seeing our richest cousins that I could ever <laughs> imagine. And I knew that they were rich because oranges grew on trees in their backyard. <laughs> They, we didn't have to wait for Christmas time to go pick an orange or a lemon from your home at Margaret. And I just want to tell you today how much I love you. She keeps track of such a huge posterity, and, and we really, really love her. I wasn't sure why Marlene invited me here today other than to get all of us ready, ready for Mother's Day. Now, I don't know how you feel about Mother's Day, but... Um, to me, it seems like they put us up on a pedestal and we smile and every guilty feeling we've ever had in our lives <laughs> just comes down how we potty trained our children without M&Ms. And um, it was like just the, the, the guilt that, that we feel. Um, but, you know, and we've heard such magnificent things today. I am just in awe. People ask what genre of music I have composed, and I say that it's music to clean your fridge and toilet by. <laughs> and it's just everyday mother songs, but I have amazing children. Our daughter, Valerie, that's on the program, and I hope that you look at their bios that's on the, the site, because all of them are magnificent children. Like my dad used to say, it shows you can make something out of nothing. <laughs> and, but they have an amazing father who is back, back at the back. But they have come today, and, and this isn't a family that does things a lot together. In fact, this is the first time in 25 years we've been in the same room doing a program. Our Megan just flew in last night from Dallas, Texas. They're finishing a residency there. Our daughter-in-law, Talisha, stepped in for our Valerie, who is having surgery. They moved here from Indiana just a short time ago, and so she happens to be living close. Amy moved from Las Vegas to Logan, so they're the closest ones to us. This is our Allison, who lives in the Boise area, who does, they all do amazing things with music. And this is Jordan, who set up this amazing sound system in the middle of studying for his occupational therapy exams, and he really does need all of your prayers, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And he's our banjo player, and it was really fun to, to see Clive Romney um, perform also, a fellow banjo player. So what we'd like to do is start out with a Mother's Day song for you, and this one isn't going to make you cry, hopefully. It will make you laugh. In fact, my sister said, if they really loved us on Mother's Day, instead of giving us a geranium, they'd give us all a Valium. So this is, okay, come on up. Amy will play on this one. Okay. Ready? Oh. 
Hurry, hurry, faster, faster, keep up the pace. Hurry, mother, with some effort, you'll keep in the race. You'll do PTA, get an MBA, there's so many things to choose. Oh, what am I to do? Drive to Girl Scouts, drive to school. Drop kids off at the swimming pool. It seems I'm always driving and I think I've gone too far. I'm sick of living in my car. Mom, I need some socks. Mom, don't make me late. Mom, please take me potty. I simply cannot wait. Mom, we're out of milk. We're out of bread. We're out of food. Who wrote this job description? What does motherhood include? Mommy, hurry faster, faster. Mom, don't take the pace. Hurry, mother, potty. I simply cannot wait. You'll do potty. Oh, what am I to do? Motherhood include Busyness is just a way of life But we've got to have a balance to survive With all the work we need to play And make a memory every day Put more living Got a little feedback in the mic, so we're just going to switch. Okay, so can you all hear with the, the, the sound? So bless your hearts for staying clear to the end. My dad always had a saying that when your when your buns are done, your brain is numb. <laughs> so I think that's pretty amazing that all of you are still here. You know, one of my favorite quotes is by an F.W. Borum who was speaking about the events during the Great March of Napoleon in 1809. He said, everybody was watching the battles and the wars and just waited for the slow information that would come as far as how these battles were playing out. He said, all the while these battles were raging, babies were being born. But who could think about babies? Everybody was thinking about battles. In that one year, in 1809, guess what babies stole into the world? A little host of heroes. Gladstone, born at Liverpool. Alfred Tennyson, born at Somersbury Rectory. Oliver Wendell Holmes made his first appearance in Massachusetts. And Abraham Lincoln drew his first breath in old Kentucky. Music was blessed through the advent of Frederick Chopin at Warsaw. Felix Mendelssohn at Hamburg, Elizabeth Barrett Browning was born at Durham. But nobody thought of babies, everybody was thinking of battles. Yet which of the battles of 1809 mattered more than the babies of 1809? We fancy that God can only manage this world by big battalions, when all the while he is doing it by sending beautiful babies. When a wrong wants writing, when a work wants doing, or a truth wants preaching, or a continent wants opening, God sends a baby into the world to do that job. And who is raising these babies? It is you. When Mother's Day comes tomorrow and you get the accolades or your geranium or whatever you get, hopefully you get something because you are doing such a remarkable, remarkable work. Today we just want to quickly share with you three L's. Our topic was to bring, to help you to appreciate the simple joys of mothering. So we've entitled it, Lighten Up, Live It Up, and Learn to Laugh Again, Finding More Joy in Motherhood. The three L's we want you to remember, number one is let it go. Number two is live with less. And number four is learn to laugh 
or at least smile. Oh, what did I say? Three. Did I say four? We were editing 10 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> There's three. In fact, the first time we did that song was in the mother's lounge when 20 minutes ago. <laughs> So bless my children's hearts. All right, first is let it go. Second is live with less. And the third thing we're doing is learn to laugh or at least smile. The first thing is to let it go. You know, there's, how many of you feel overwhelmed? Just raise your hand. You, this group does really amazing things. How many of you feel guilty? How many of you feel guilty if you don't feel overwhelmed? <laughs> it's, like, it's just how we are. It's, we can become guilt sponges. You need to know that tomorrow you need a badge that said you showed up for your job every day last year. You did it. If for no other reason, you did it. You came, you showed up, and you did miraculous, amazing things. We need to let go of things that just help us, just make us to, to feel guilty. And, and insert your own little things when they're doing the Mother's Day talks tomorrow, wherever you may be hearing it. Know that their life is as real as yours is and that we need to not put judgment on ourselves. We need to not put judgment on other people as well. Just enjoy and rejoice in the day. There's a bumper sticker that I've seen that says, Utah, guilt without sin. <laughs> and I know that a lot of you are from lots of different places, but I get a, a big kick out of that bumper sticker. We need to just let go of things and know that we are doing our best and that we are trying, that we're trying to be kind and gentle and good and that we're doing the best job we can. In fact, there was a second grade class that the teacher did a little booklet just a little while ago that had the children fill out little things about their mother to, to give to her. And one of the pages in there said, my mother cooks the best blank. And the little boy wrote in his mother's book, my mother cooks the best that she can. <laughs> and I love that. I'm going to turn the time to Amy, who is going to let us know how we can learn to let things go. <laughs> Don't I have a fun mom? <laughs> she, she is a great mom. She'll be the first to tell you that there's a lot of things that she doesn't do, either because she doesn't like them or it just never really was her thing but one thing she does do is she has a lot of fun she is the person that showed me that it can be fun and joyful to be a mother i had something that i was going to share with you and if you want to go home and read a really great blog post i want you to write this down if you're if you need something to read this weekend it's called drops of awesome by katherine thompson has any have any of you heard that before drops of awesome it is a fantastic little blog post about a young mom that was feeling guilty because she had a wonderful morning with her young son walking him to the bus stop. And they were smiling and she said, I love you. And it was a beautiful day. And then suddenly that mom guilt was piled on her and she said, oh, you're just putting on a big act. Think of all the other times you've yelled at him in the morning and how you haven't walked him to the bus stop and all these other things that you, you haven't done. You are a fluke. You are embarrassing. How, how could you be showing the world that it looks like you're a great mom? Then she stopped herself and said, no, drops of awesome. Every good thing you do for your child or for yourself is like a drop of awesome in your bucket. And you don't get drops taken away. You can only add every good thing that you do for your children is a drop of awesome. But what are these drops of awesome that we can put in our buckets? As I sat here, I was so amazed and impressed with all of the different presenters today. They are so passionate about what they teach and they're so good at what they do. I was amazed, amazed at the different talents. And I just had a thought, well, what, what brings me joy? What brings us joy, you individually as a mother? I think motherhood can be joyful and it can be fun. But I think like my mom said, we have to ditch the guilt about things that we really don't like to do, the non-essential things maybe we don't like to do, and focus on the things that make us joyful and build memories with our children. So I've come to accept that although we are, I'm really good at taking pictures with my phone of our children, I am awful about putting them in 
photo albums or journaling. I have friends that are so good at that, and that, that's not me. Um, I have other friends that, that do really creative uh, school things with, with their children, or they volunteer with their classroom, or they homeschool. They do all these different things, and I admire that, but that's not me. So I want you to think about what brings you joy as a mother and maybe to do more of the things that bring you joy and less of the things that you just feel guilty about or you plain old don't enjoy. How many of you would consider yourself a Play-Doh mom? How many of you love to play with Play-Doh with young children or you did? Anybody? <laughs> okay. How many of you despise Play-Doh and what it does to your house? Okay, that's, that's great. I've had very heated discussions with my friends. Are you a Play-Doh mom or not? What do, what, how do you feel about this? That's one example of something that I love and other, other moms do not. But one thing that I do love and that I have done with my children that I feel no guilt about, that I just feel joy, is creating a song for them. That is what my um, career has been before I had children and what I continue to do now. I love to make a little lullaby for them when they're born. And my, excuse me, my baby Ivy was just born eight months ago. And I had the privilege of working on a lullaby album. <clears throat> and this song was based on a little French folk, folk tune. And it's just become Ivy's song. So I want to share it with you now. I want you to think of, and as, we sing, as I sing this and my sister Megan plays her viola, what brings you joy as a mother? And think of something that you can just throw away that, brings, that um, causes you guilt. And think of the things that bring you joy. So we're going to perform Time for Sleeping. <clears throat> Close your eyes, my little one. Dream, my love, till morning comes. Earth is still, the day is done. Now it's time for sleeping. Earth is still, the day is done. And now it's time for sleeping. Wind is humming through the leaves Birds coo softly in the trees Hear their twilight symphony Now it's time for sleeping Hear their twilight symphony And now it's time for sleeping Painted pink and blue Shadows bid the light adieu Stars are watching over you Now it's time for sleeping Stars are watching over you And now it's time for sleeping Time for sleep. My sister Allison will now address the second L. All right, L number two. <coughs> is live with less. So a couple years ago, I was flying out of Salt Lake Airport, and I sat down after going through baggage check and security, and she said over the loudspeaker, flight 
1056 has been canceled. Thank you for waking up at four o'clock in the morning and moving heaven and earth to be here on time. <laughs> Enjoy your seat, stay here forever. She didn't really say that, but she did say that, 10, that 1056 was canceled or was delayed because of mechanical failure. And so I looked out the window and I saw an airplane and saw them messing and monkeying with the wing of the plane. So I went and talked to one of the ladies at the desk and I said, you know, so what's wrong with the plane? And she said, well, the pilot, as he was coming in, he ran into another plane with the wing. <laughs> he nicked the wing and dented the wing. So they're trying to fix it. So my first thought was, I sure hope that's not my pilot. Because <laughs> that would flunk you in driver's ed, like if you were going to drive a car. <laughs> so I really hope that that wasn't my pilot for my flight. It was, <laughs> but we made it OK eventually. Because as I was watching them try to fix this airplane, I saw them come up with this machinery and they took off the wing. Not kidding, they took off at least almost half, probably about a third of this wing of the airplane. And immediately after they took off that wing, they said, flight 1056, now boarding. <laughs> and I thought, you've got to be kidding, not on that plane. And it was, they were taking people right onto the plane. They had just taken off half of the wings. So again, I walked to the little lady at the desk and I said, so I just saw them take a wing off my airplane. <laughs> Are we really supposed, is, are we good? And, and she said, yes, the extra piece of the wing is only to make the plane go faster. And for performance, it doesn't actually affect the flight. You can fly with stubby little wings, I guess. And so I boarded the plane and said a really, really heartfelt prayer and we took off and landed just fine. <laughs> but from that experience, I learned that sometimes less is more. Um, that plane wasn't going anywhere if it insisted on hanging on to its extra to the piece that maybe made it go a lot faster, but maybe wasn't quite as vital to the airplane mechanics. So you see where this is going, right? <laughs> All of us have those extra pieces that are just extra. And instead of helping us fly faster and faster and fa faster, they actually slow us down. So less is more. Three ways I thought of that less can be more. The first way is less stuff. So I just moved two weeks ago. How many of you moved recently the last couple months? So are you with me that you wish you had no earthly possessions? <laughs> and right now, if I could, I would just give them all away if I could like keep a toothbrush and a bra <laughs> or maybe just a toothbrush. Like I don't want, I don't want my stuff. I don't want any of my stuff right now. And we keep so much added to our lives with all of our junk that we have to dust and move and organize and pick up 10 times a day. So one way we can learn to live with less and bring more peace and joy into our lives is by getting rid of stuff. It's so liberating to live with less. And in doing so, we help teach our children that more stuff does not equal more happy. Um, the media messages are just opposite. More happy equals more stuff. Uh, but as we learn to get rid of that and we show them that stuff is not the stuff that life is made out of, then we can teach them to have joy as well. The second way that we can live with less is to live with less judgment. Oh, ladies, we're so hard on each other, aren't we? <laughs> but I finally figured out why, at least for me, it was easy to be judgmental to my fellow sisters on this earth. And so I wrote a blog post on my blog called Once a Day Amazing. Um, and this is my blog post, and it's called Why I Don't Like You. No offense. <laughs> I finally figured out why I don't like you, really. I've also realized why you don't like me. I've even figured out why stay-at-home moms can't abide moms with jobs, why hippie moms don't dig organized moms, why tofu moms can't stomach Cheeto moms, and why mommy wars exist at all, when we should all be cheering, you made a little person too? You're trying to help it grow into a big person too? Wow, I am so proud of you. Can I get a hug, sista? I don't like you because I have to get this right. And that means I can't be wrong. I'm investing everything I can scrounge together into mothering these little people. It's the most important thing in the world to me. I'm usually worn out, frequently guilt prone, and abnormally anxious as I do this mother gig. I can't handle the idea that I might be doing it wrong because I love my littles too much. So when you mother differently than me, a dark worm crawls through my brain saying, what if she is right? If you're wrong, your children will become thugs. Because I can't do it wrong and still hang on to the few marbles I have, it's easier for me to stick out my mental tongue at you and call you the bad mom. 
then I'm still the good mom and my kids will stay out of the penitentiary. <laughs> Whew, that was close. <laughs> but what if there's a better way? What if we trusted each other just a tiny bit and realized that even if you are a different kind of mother, we could both possibly end up having law-abiding citizens. Even if you stay home and I have a part-time job, even if you write in your kids' journals every single day and I barely remember to take a picture on their birthday, even if you give them Tylenol and I rub them with lavender oil, even if I cook a dinner from scratch and you stop by Panda Express, can't we all just get along? Different kids need different moms. Your kids need you. As moms, we need to make major decisions carefully, analyze our time-taking activities, and constantly replenish our parenting tool belt, and do our best, and then some. And then we need to chillax, as my 11-year-old loves to say, and wave our white flags. You won't glare at me for giving my kids an artificial color number 40 popsicle, and I won't raise my eyebrows when your four-year-old tells me about the PG-13 movie he just watched the night before. I'll look at you as a fellow traveler instead, put my own sizable insecurities on the shelf, and let you mother your own way. I'll give you a mental knuckle bump for daring to raise a child. And maybe, even with my faults, you'll give me a silent shake of your imaginary pom-poms and cheer me on too. So, thank you. <laughs> But when we live with less judgment, we can find peace. We can have more charity towards each other, and we truly can find simple joy in our motherhood. So the third way to live with less is live with less expectation. Oh, we're so Facebooked and Pinterested into thinking that we are terrible moms, and we will never, ever measure up. Um, my sister mentioned the journaling. I have a friend who literally has kept a journal for each of her six children since the day they were born. Every child, every day. Other moms are great businesswomen. Other moms do such fantastic things. And we compare the very worst in our hearts to the very best that we see on the outside of other people and think that we have to do it all. But we don't. Um, just like the airplane, sometimes in motherhood, less is more. So I've come up with a new motto for my life as a mother uh, that has really helped me, and it's this, all day sane, once a day amazing. So let me explain the difference in those things in my mind. So staying sane to me means I drive, feed, work, wipe, and teach without freaking out. <laughs> That's all. That's all I have to do all day is just make it, show up and not freak out all day. But then, one time a day, I try to pull it together. I try to mother hard. I try to love deep and make a memory. But before we get too far into what amazing means, I'll explain that a little bit more so you don't get overwhelmed. This is another poem from my blog. Amazing. Time-lapse photography of my mother days. The speed feels accurate. Here, there, back again. Shoes, school, piano, shoes, van, basketball, shoes, homework, bed, shoes. And then a moment, a sigh, a laugh, a cry. A drop into a deep well that will echo past my passing. A snapshot of the kind of life I wanted all along. In this moment, we are amazing. And so all day sane, once a day amazing, has a couple rules for me. The first one is to not overthink it. When I say amazing, I'm not talking about glow-in-the-dark paper mache solar systems hanging from your child's bedroom or making fondant cupcakes with your child's profile picture on it or something. That's not amazing to me. Amazing to me is having stinky feet contests, having races in the backyard, playing hide-and-seek, Maybe it's blowing bubbles for your baby or tapping toes to your teenager's music. It's turning up the music and dancing like crazy in the living room. Those are the amazing things that help me mother. The second thing I always try to do is to be fully present. My phone is far away. I don't look every time it beeps at me. Uh, the TV is off. I don't answer any calls. Uh, just for that one little time I'm being amazing, I try to mother hard and be fully present for my children. 
to love them deep. As you hold that little baby in your arms, since there's so many cute little babies here, as they come out, you don't think, oh, I just can't wait till I can cook and clean for you and do all the housework and things. That's not, you know, you imagine snuggling with them. As you, you know, you first find out you're pregnant. You imagine, you know, skipping through the park and things like that. But we forget that in the busyness of being mothers, the reality of it. So this time of day is when you say, this is what I wanted. This is how I want to mother. And then during this time, I don't let myself correct my kids. Anything short of calling the fire department or having to go to the emergency room, I just try to let go. Um, if, they, if they do anything wrong, just, you know, if, if it can possibly slide during this time, I let it slide. I don't give correction, criticism, or helpful motherly advice. I have plenty of time to nag my kids later. So during this time, I really try not to nag them. I don't say, make sure not to get glue on the table, or I'm cold, go put on a sweater, or you'll shoot your eye out. Later, later, later. While you're being amazing, try to just put that aside. The next one is you have to do it every single day. Uh, just like Amy talked about drops of awesome. As you make this a consistent pattern, you can be amazing every single day, no matter how terrible the day was. Too much, I think, we just kind of coast on middle range life, just kind of get by every day. But when you try every single day, no matter how bad it is, to be amazing, wonderful things happen. Um, you can do this even when you're depressed. You can do it when you have chronic fatigue syndrome. You can do it if you've just had a terrible trauma in your life. For five minutes a day, we can pull it together, can't we, ladies? We can make that mothering time count. One of the worst uh, amazing times for me was right after I had my fifth child. It was, just, it was one of the worst times of our family. We loved the little guy, but he wasn't nursing. He screamed all the time. My husband got strep throat, and he was like a dead dish rag on the couch trying, like, oh, help, can I get the bottle? You know, just, just such a mess. And my daughter had 107 degree fever. Another daughter had an eye infection, and she had a reaction to her amoxicillin, had an extremely severe reaction. And I had a child starting kindergarten, all like in this two-day period that we brought my baby home. It was nuts. But after a few days, we were all so hammered, and I just was such a wreck, and the little umbilical cord you know, fell off the baby. And so we had a belly button party at our house. <laughs> I made those little like peanut butter cookies with the Hershey Kiss in the middle. Don't those look like belly buttons? Like you'll never be able to eat them again without thinking of that, I promise. But and then we took M&Ms and had contests who could hold them in our belly buttons the longest without the M&M falling out. And just did all sorts of stupid, funny belly button contests to celebrate this umbilical cord falling off. So in the middle of all this chaos, my kids still talk about that. Where it could have been the day that I didn't come out from under my covers it turned out to be a wonderful day. And we were amazing for those 20 minutes. We were amazing in the middle of the chaos. So I know that you can do it no matter what's happening. So please just remember that less is okay. Sometimes those extra few feet or that extra desire for more speed to more greatness actually keeps us on the ground. We're not able to do what we want to do as mothers. So by doing less, you'll actually give your child more They'll give, you'll give them more of you, and that's what they want anyway. So my sister Amy is going to sing a song that I wrote called Wings to Fly, and this was done um, for a wonderful lady. Do you guys know Marla Silly, the fly lady? Raise your hand if you know her. Lots of nods. So she commissioned us to do an, a children's album to help kids learn how to work. And so this is one of the lullabies from the end of that CD. And I, I just want to add to you, I wrote this song in the car. It's the only song I've ever written without paper. And I just was driving back. I just moved from Florida, and I surprised my mom on her birthday because I, I only lived five hours away now. <laughs> and so I just drove up and surprised her on her birthday and drove back home by myself. And I wrote this song on the way. So it's inspired by my mom, inspired by my kids, uh, kind of in the middle there, being really grateful uh, for the chance to fly and give my kids wings to fly. <clears throat> Sometimes I watch you play not a care in the world and dreams so big they fill the summer sky how do i give you all you need to make it in this world to keep you safe but let you learn to fly i'll give you hope so you can follow dreams that are your own I'll give you strength For times when you must stand up all alone I'll teach you truth So when I'm not there You still know what 
God's right, I'll give you wings. God sends the breeze, and you'll learn to fly. I wish I could protect you when the world is not kind. To shield you from beneath and from above Though you'll have your hard times And you will cry your tears Child, you will never doubt that you are loved Cause I'll give you hope So you can follow dreams that are your own I'll give you strength for times when you must stand up all alone. I'll teach you truth so when I'm not there, you still know what's right. I'll give you wings, God sends the breeze, and you'll learn to fly. I'm amazed at your strength, how you grow each day. I can't wait to see all you become But for now, I'll just watch you play I'll give you hope So you can follow dreams that are your own And I'll give you strength For times when you must stand up all alone I'll teach you truth So when I'm not there you still know what's right I'll give you wings God sends the breeze And you'll learn to fly God, I'll give you wings God sends the breeze And you'll learn to fly One of my favorite sayings for, that I made up for myself is, if I couldn't be it, I'm so proud I could birth it. <laughs> These kids really are amazing, and I am so grateful for their help today. That leads us to the last L, which is lighten, lighten up and laugh, or at least smile. Uh, being a registered nurse, I've done a lot of workshops only on humor therapy and laughter therapy. If you can just change one thing, did, did you know that even a phony smile releases endorphins? Do you know what endorphins do? It lowers your blood pressure. It, it helps you to just have this wonderful, it's like after a big run. In fact, 20 minutes of hard laughter is like an hour of running. Did you know that as far as what it does oxygenation for your body? If you're laughing really hard like you do at 2 o'clock in the morning at girls camp, remember those days? <laughs> but laughter is so important. And a, a wonderful parenting expert, Dr. Glenn Latham, made the comment, if you can only change one thing in your home to bring more joy and happiness, and that is to change your face. Don't go through life looking like it's one long root canal. We need, we need to be happy and show joy in our faces as we're dealing with our, as we're going through these everyday things of mothering. We have so many opportunities to laugh. I mean, who, who can't laugh almost daily if you've got a, a toddler in your house or a, a child that's just starting kindergarten? In fact, Megan, I'm going to put you on the spot. I finally learned this year about the true meaning of Cinco de Mayo. Megan called me. She learned it from her kindergartner who learned it from Isaac on the playground in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Come, Megan. Okay, so she said, I just learned what Cinco de Mayo is. What, what is it, Megan? <laughs> so Addie said, it's where everyone gets to drink a beer, even the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know, right? Cinco de Mayo, even the children can get soused on Cinco de Mayo, right? <laughs> I mean, every day, I just had a niece that, we live in Logan, and, and they always, the, Wellsville is a small community, but they, anybody from Wellsville? 
Uh, oh, one. Okay, so your wonderful park there, you have things in the summer and they have bands and music and sometimes watermelon and treats. And my niece, who had moved there fairly recently, decided that she would take her daughters and go to the Wellsville night in the park thing. And so she went there and was just really amazed at, at the nice spread that they had put out for all the people. And they had like pulled pork and watermelon and chips and they loaded up and being a, a small town, they recognized many people and made small talk and, and everything. And then she started to notice there, there's no sound system here. There's, you know, I don't see anybody that's going to to do the performing tonight and asked if it was a little bit later. And she said, when is the entertainment coming? And and the person that she was talking to said, oh, we don't have entertainment tonight. And she said, she got a little bit nervous. She said, isn't this the concert in the park? And she said, no, it's the high school soccer championship dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so after she'd had the wonderful meal and sat down with her children and enjoyed this wonderful meal, you know, there's a saying that says, disaster plus time equals humor. We need to laugh more. Don't you just feel better? You just release, release some great endorphins that counterbalance the adrenaline that we run on way too much of the time. So we need to, to truly lighten up and laugh or, or at least smile. I love my mother. She was the same, she would have been the same age as Aunt Margaret. Um, She's been gone for a lot of years. She raised eight children and then took on five foster children after that and was just, just had such a fun, relaxed way of parenting, didn't she, Marlene? Um, the newspaper actually interviewed her once and said, Lucille, can you just sum up what your philosophy of parenting is? And she said, yes, at this stage of life, it pretty much is. I won't bother you if you don't bother me. <laughs> And then she also would see, like, like people would give kids a cookie or something before dinner. And, and I watched once when somebody tried to give uh, one of the grandkids a cookie. And, and her daughter-in-law said, oh, don't give him that. Don't give him that. It'll ruin her appetite. And she said, with all those kids, I was always praying something would ruin their appetites. <laughs> LAUGHTER And that's just exactly how she parented. You know, you, you really are doing just an amazing, amazing job. Um, in fact, we've got, CDs aren't being produced very much anymore, but we have some CDs and we want to give away, what, three? To amazing mothers who have, who have come today, who've stayed the whole time. So how, sh how should we award those? Oh, I want to know, I, I am just astounded at the distances that people came you might not get to count because you are in charge and you're some so, so, so far away. All right, anybody further, I mean, not further away, anybody almost as far as Virginia? Where did you come from? Missouri. Anybody? Philadelphia. I think you beat. Okay, one CD out on that table will go to this good lady from Philadelphia. Oh my goodness. Now we're going to give away one to the oldest person who came. Can anybody beat my amazing Aunt Margaret, whose mind is clearer than any of ours in our family? <laughs> She's amazing. Anybody older than 95? Yay, Aunt Margaret, you get the CD. <laughs> okay, who has the newest baby here? What? To, let's see, yours is what, three? You don't, <laughs> that's my Nate, he's singing on our CD. That's my Nate and their brand new baby that he has. And he says he doesn't want my CD because he's on it. Okay, um, how old, two weeks? Two months, anybody newer than two months, how old? Five weeks old and she came with the baby. All right, remember to go out there and get one. Okay, who has the most children? Anybody more than five? Six? Seven? Would you please stand up and let us all put you on a pedestal? <laughs> Make sure you stop. And she really has 17 children.
and is loving. That deserves You get a CD and my youngest child. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> Just kidding, Jordan. Um, this has been a really a remarkable time where we have, have laughed, where we have talked about letting it go, living with less, and laughing. The timing is perfect. Our daughter Allison just had her first book published that has been picked up by most of the, the bookstores nationally uh, that you could think of and, and online. And I have asked her, this is, this is really your first time that you've actually had books in hand. Um, just pick them, pick them up. Jordan brought them up um, from the Provo area. And I've asked her in conclusion if she would read this Mother's Day gift to you. It is called, I'm sorry. When mommy's home with me. He's so, sweet. so I wrote this book in the middle of postpartum depression. <laughs> Who's ever been there? <laughs> okay, so after this experience I talked about with the belly button party, um, my fifth came, and I had considered myself a pretty decent mom up to that point, you know, okay. Um, and I fell apart with my fifth baby. I had such severe postpartum depression. And I had several months of trying to pull out of it. As part of that, my sweet dear husband said, you're a creative soul, so go get creative. Here's some time. Try to you know, get back your, your sanity a little. He didn't quite say it like that. He said, you need a little time to yourself, which means you're freaking out constantly. <laughs> you know, how can I help this not happen all the time? <laughs> but it came out as, let's, you know, let's make sure you have some time to yourself. And so during that period, I wrote, When Mommy's Home With Me. And it had started, I had written two stanzas of it about seven years before when I was waiting at swim lessons for my kids after coming from a remarkable play group where I had so many friends who had so many diverse interests and kind of pre-lifes before their kids. And I saw how their skills translated into their parenting. You know, I had a mom who'd been recruited, I mean, a friend who was a mother who had been recruited by the CIA, you know, to be a Russian spy. Uh, she got pregnant by the time her paperwork was done and could never do it. Another friend who had run a business, you know, moms who were great painters and creators. And I saw how their parenting style was so perfect for their children and how they were so different. You know, the tomboy moms were climbing the trees with their kids and the prissy moms were braiding their hair. And it just, I was really struck with that. So I, I wrote just a couple stanzas and then I kind of resurrected it again during this really dark period of my life. And you'd think that writing a book about how awesome moms are would be super, super depressing <laughs> while you're already feeling depressed. But for me, it was completely therapeutic to remind me of my mission and I didn't have to be every other mom I just had to be their mom and I had to do the best I could in my own way and so I wrote when mommy's home with me and I think I'll read it from my storybook and then we're gonna try to make this PDF show the pictures a little bit better and it's dedicated to my mom for hundreds of magical bedtime stories. And when we get to the writer mom, I just have to show this picture first. I asked the illustrator if she could base it after my wonderful mother reading us and telling us stories before we went to bed. And I hope you see yourself in one of these pages. Well, you can see, I'll just read it like this. My mommy was a gardener, but now she's home with me. Bright lilies bloom outside my room with lavender and peas. I help her plant the sweet corn and the carrots in a row as she creates a piece of earth where kids and plants can grow. My mommy is a stylist, and when she's home with me, she does my hair with class and flair in ways I can't believe. Sometimes on a Saturday, she lets me style hers too. Then we're both looking pretty with our fancy new hairdos. My mommy is a baker, and when she's home with me, we love to make sweet sugar cake with huckleberry cream. While we wait for it to bake, it's sticky licky time. The bowl is clean and we're a mess, and I am so glad she's mine. Mommy was a pilot, and now she's home with me. She lifts me high into the sky. I feel like I have wings. Then I put down my landing gear. The runway is in sight. I get a tickle tune-up and a bedtime kiss. Good night. My mommy was a banker, but now she's home with me. Pennies clank in piggy banks, and then we start to dream. The world is full of things to buy when Mr. Pig is stuffed. 
I'll bring home an elephant when I have saved enough. My mommy is a dancer, and now she's home with me. When music plays, she starts to sway and sweeps me off my feet. Around the room we samba, we cha-cha, and we jive. I get so happy dizzy, I feel like I can fly. My mommy was a doctor, but now she's home with me. With every fall I always call, go find a doctor, please. We laugh until it doesn't hurt, and I forget to cry. She lets me choose a bandage, then sings a lullaby. Mommy teaches yoga, and when she's home with me, we moo and meow like cat and cow while doing our routine. As the sun begins to rise and morning birds appear, my heart is glad, my body's strong, my mind is calm and clear. Mommy is a scientist, and when she's home with me, we memorize and theorize so analytically. Volcanoes are exploding, sparkling crystals grow. Can't wait to tell tomorrow for my own science show. My mommy is an artist, and now she's home with me. Our brushes fly as she and I create our masterpiece. She shows me how to mix the red with yellow, then with blue. My life is full of colors of every shade and hue. Mommy was a teacher, and now she's home with me. She helps me know how bodies grow and why the grass is green. Where is Madagascar? How does thunder start? Together we find answers to fill my wondering heart. My mommy is a writer, and when she's home with me, she tells me tales of boats and whales and castles by the sea. When it's time to say goodnight, as stars begin to shine, I sleep with fairies in my hands and magic on my mind. Mom will do so many things. She's smart as she can be, but she knows kids grow up too soon. So now she's home with me. Thank you. And so to end, I also wanted to give away a book to the mother and daughter pair. If we have, do we have moms and daughters here together? Some who look the most alike. <laughs> and so I want, if you're a mom and daughter, stand up and we're going to go, just like I'll point to you and you're going to clap. We're going to do that way. And we're going to see who wins the book just back at the back table here. Come and get a book, whoever wins. So who, anyone over here with a mom and a daughter? It can be baby daughter, old daughter. Oh, look at these. Okay, so we have contestants number one right here. Mother, daughter. I like it. Mother and two daughters right here. Another mother and two daughters over there. Oh. And where's your daughter? Do you have a daughter with you? Okay, mother, daughter. Nice. Another mother, another mother, daughter. Awesome. All right, and back in the back, mother. Okay. And over here, mother and daughter. It's like sisters in Newton. Two more mother and daughters. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, and one more set. One more set. Stand up. Stand up. Oh. All right. I think I'm going to have to choose the last ones to win the book as far as looking alike. And then everyone else, they said they'll give you a CD as well. So anyone who was here with their mom and daughter, come back and you can get a CD. But thank you for letting us be here with you today. We have, am I closing? Okay. okay. That's all for me. My mom's going to finish up. Thanks, though, for letting us be here today with you. So I hope that you will remember the three L's and remember this day with gratitude for those who have given weeks and months in the planning for every detail that was worked out beautifully. I think it was an incredible lunch. Don't you think that was just good? They did a very good job. Pass the word along. The service, the service was great. So in closing, I'm going to sing, and I, I don't sing anymore. I've had some esophageal surgery, and... And I just kind of croak out a low alto now. And my singing days are pretty much gone. But you know what? Mom should never stop. Mom should never stop singing. For so long, I felt so guilty about so many things. Like moving to Utah, I felt really, really guilty that I didn't can. I've never canned. I grew up really nervous of the 
I guess it's a pressure cooker that starts rattling. And, and I'm a 50s. I was born in the 50s. And so I grew up really scared when we had to dive under our chairs so that we didn't get bombed by the Russians. And I associated that <laughs> with the thing that rattles on top of a pressure canner. And so I, I was just terrified of canning. So I've never canned and I never will can. But I felt so guilty when my canning neighbors would come over that I bought one of the ones that don't explode. I think it's called a cold pack. And then I put sugar and water on my floor so it would look like theirs during canning season, just in case anybody stopped by. <laughs> but then one Mother's Day, when the guilt was too much, I realized that it was time to write my theme song because I finally figured out that you don't have to can to get to heaven. There are cobwebs in the corner, jelly on the floor. My laundry hasn't been caught up since 1984. Next door I have a neighbor who cans peaches by the ton. She made her children's play clothes. She says her laundry's done. I used to let it bother me. I searched the good book or my research is conclusive. I never knew before. You don't have to can to get to heaven. Goodness can't be measured in a jar. You don't have to sing or sew or wax your garden hose. You'll make it be the best of who you are. I should be washing windows. I'd rather write a song. I'd rather hold a child's hand. It won't be little long. We've got to stop comparing. Don't fill your minds with doubt. Do the things that matter most. Do the things that count. I used to let it bother me. I searched the good book or my research is conclusive. I never knew before. You don't have to can to get to heaven. Goodness can't be measured in a jar. You don't have to sing or sew or wax your garden hose. You'll make it be the best of who you are. You don't have to can to get to heaven. Goodness can't be measured in a jar. You don't have to sing or sew or wax your garden hose. You'll make it be the best of who you are. You truly will make it be the best of who you are. I am so grateful to my children, for those who came to support, for sweet Talisha, who has 50 people coming to her house for a baby blessing tomorrow and who still stepped in and helped. <laughs> she is my daughter from another mother. Thank you so much to all of you for coming today. We'll turn the time back over to Marlene. I told you they were fun. <laughs> they still are fun.